Hello and welcome to this video on Camworks and SolidWorks Cam. We're going to be talking about four axis setup. My name is Robert French and I'm an applications engineer with Go Engineer. All right, so we already have a couple videos on our Go Engineer YouTube channel talking about four axis, but I got a lot of questions recently from customers about how do I set up, you know, my indexing positions? How do I indicate to the software that I need to rotate this part inside of a rotary axis? We have a couple videos that might go over that, but some of those videos are long. We're going to make one quick short video here, get right to the point of how to set this up. So a couple key steps here. We need to define our machine and make sure that the machine is set to four axis. There's really no explanation there, right? We just need to make sure that our machine is uh, indicated to be four axis, that we can indicate you know, our rotary axis and such. We also need to define our coordinate system, and that involves both the origin and the axis. So, we want to make sure that these axes are pointing in the correct direction because eventually we're going to indicate to our software which one of those axes is our rotary axis spinning about. Lastly, we're going to take a final look at the mill part setups in the operations tab and that's important because the mill part setups in the operations tab is where we can finally go and analyze where's our touch off point, our work coordinate system or our G54, uh, where's the rotary axis happening? What rotary positions? What, what is our A axis tilting to? What, what degree are we tilting to in order to you know, allow our tool access to the various sides of the part as we use our rotary access to index? All right, we're going to review all these steps in the software, so let's jump on over and take a look at this stuff uh, in practice. All right, here we are in software, and we have our part on screen. We have kind of a unique stock condition. We have that simple bounding box around our part. Then we have this very nice uh, circular boss just coming off the side. That'll chuck up perfectly into our rotary axis, into our fourth axis. So pretty cool example that I pulled directly from a customer. Let's take a look at how we set it up for fourth axis. First, we're going to jump into our machine definition. And right off this first tab for machine, we're going to find a four axis machine. You might have created other machines in your tech database. We have videos of that on our YouTube channel. But basically, we just need to identify a fourth axis machine. Once I select that, our next step would be jumping over to our Setup tab. Once again, we're just confirming that in our database, this machine was set up to be a four axis machine. We're just going to say OK for now. Let's go ahead and define our coordinate system. Once again, jumping into the tree on the left hand side, editing the definition of the coordinate system. Right here, we just need to make sure our axes are pointing in the correct direction. So inevitably we're going to have our x-axis be the axis of rotation and want that x-axis to point along the axis of that circular boss that we saw in our stock definition a moment ago. So over on the left hand side of the screen I'm going to choose inside of our x-axis box and click a face tilting my x-axis normal to that. And Now that's in the correct direction. Let's go ahead and modify z as well and that's the final condition we're looking for. Perfect. X-axis in the correct direction, Z pointing upward, kind of our neutral, you know, zero position uh, in this indexing setup. So that all looks good. All right. I'm actually going to jump back into my machine definition now and just double confirm one more thing. On the setup tab, we had indicated that we were on four axis. Perfect. Let's jump over to our rotary axis tab and also just confirm that our x-axis is indeed set as the rotary axis. All right, our next step here would be to just simply start programming by creating mill part setups and identifying features within them. And we have lots of videos going over how to create features, so we're not super interested in that uh, during this video. But we're going to go through, and I'm just going to create a couple setups here manually. So out of my tree on the left-hand side, I right-click coordinate system and say mill part setup. I'm going to obviously have a setup with our end mill facing downward this direction. We're going to have an additional setup, maybe facing the part from this direction to access some of the holes facing that direction. And good enough for now. Uh, this part might take additional setups, but for the purpose of this video, these two setups are more than enough. Now, the last part of the fourth axis indexing, understanding how your machine is going to rotate the part and things like that, as mentioned in the PowerPoint, is going to be found in the Operations tab. When I switch over, I see two equivalent mill part setups kind of linked loosely back to the Features tab. Right? I created these setups in the Features tab, and now I see them also represented here in the Operations tab. If I go ahead and edit one of those, and let's perhaps jump into mill part setup 2. 
This first tab here, origin, is our actual touch-off point. That'll be your work coordinate system, uh, G54, part touch-off, and so on. Where are we touching off on the part? We also have an axis tab. You might rotate these axes slightly, but probably not in this case. Um, indicating on our offset tab, once again here is where you could indicate, for instance, I'm working on a G54 uh, work offset. But it's really this indexing tab that's of uh, special significance to us during this video. When I jump into that, that's when I'm finally seeing what is the software, you know, what have I indicated to the software about how it needs to rotate to get to its certain indexing positions. And you can see there's two solutions to this guy actually. I could rotate my A axis 270 degrees positive or 90 degrees negative. So you can choose either one of these that you would like to use uh, for your indexing, whatever makes more sense. Uh, for your probably, probably the negative 90 in this case, it's a little bit quicker than going 270 degrees, right? So that's that last tab, that's, that's that final confirmation step of understanding where you're gonna rotate to, how you're gonna rotate there, and maybe just looking at mill part setup as one, just to kind of confirm, uh, this was our zero position, right? This is uh, zero degrees in the rotary because when we did our initial coordinate system back in the features tab, we saw that that z-axis was pointing upward and this mill part setup was kind of parallel to that alongside of that. So this is our zero position for our rotary axis, a is at zero degrees. So once again, this was just a quick, concise video about the key steps to setting up for axis. Uh, once you get all those setups created, like you saw me create a few of, it's just simple programming at that point, organizing features and operations into their correct setups uh, you can obviously see now we've we've got the correct rotary axis, uh, fourth axis setup done, and the machine is going to rotate uh, to correct positions. So uh, this has been a quick video on fourth axis. My name is Robert French. Thanks for watching.